Hi everybody and welcome to another episode with the Anxious Resistance. Today I'm going to be talking about a historical figure. I'm going to be talking about Winston Churchill. Winston Churchill was one of the greatest leaders of the 20th century who led Britain and the Allies to victory in World War II. He was also a man who struggled with depression throughout his life. He often referred to it as the black dog that haunted him in his darkest moments. How did he cope with this mental illness and what can we learn from his example? Churchill first used the term black dog to describe his depression in a letter to his wife Clementine in 1911. He wrote, I think this is the time of year when I am most subject to attacks of the black dog with his whole retinue of gloomy shapes. He borrowed the phrase from Samuel Jackson, the 18th century writer and lexicographer who also suffered from mood swings and melancholy. Churchill's depressive episodes were often triggered by personal or political attacks such as losing his position as First Lord of the Admiralty after the disastrous Gallipoli campaign in 1915, or being ousted as Prime Minister after the 1945 general election. But sometimes they occurred without any apparent reason, plunging him into a state of despair and hopelessness. He would lose interest in his hobbies, have difficulty sleeping and concentrating, and isolate himself from others. He once confessed to his doctor, Lord Moran, I don't like standing near the edge of a platform when an express train is passing through. I like to stand back and, if possible, get a pillar between me and the train. I don't like to stand by the side of a ship and look down into the water. A second's action would end everything. A few drops of desperation. This makes it sound like Winston Churchill not only suffered from depression, but possibly from some intrusive thoughts as well. Some historians and biographers have suggested that Churchill may have had bipolar disorder, a condition characterized by alternating periods of depression and mania. They point to his bursts of energy, creativity, and charisma, as well as his impulsiveness, irritability, and risk-taking behavior. However, this diagnosis is not universally accepted, and some experts argue that Churchill's mood swings were more consistent with cyclothymic disorder, a milder form of bipolarity, or unipolar depression with anxiety. So what are some strategies that we can learn from the experiences of Winston Churchill? Whatever the nature of his condition, Churchill developed several strategies to cope with his depression and to channel it into productive and positive outcomes. Here are some of them. Number one is painting. Churchill took up painting as a hobby in 1915 after he resigned from the Admiralty. He found it a soothing and stimulating activity that helped him relax and express himself. He wrote, Painting came to my rescue in a most trying time. I know of nothing which, without exhausting the body, more entirely absorbs the mind. He painted over 500 canvases in his lifetime, mostly landscapes and seascapes and he exhibited some of them under a pseudonym. Another strategy of Churchill's was writing. He was an avid writer who produced dozens of books and articles on history, biography, politics, and war. He won the Nobel Prize in Literature in 1953 for his mastery of the written and spoken word. Writing was not only a source of income and fame for Churchill, but also a way of coping with his depression. He wrote, writing a book is an adventure. To begin with it is a toy and an amusement then it becomes a mistress, then it becomes a master, then it becomes a tyrant. The last phase is that just as you're about to be reconciled to your servitude, you kill the monster and fling him to the public. Churchill was renowned for his oratory skills and his ability to inspire and persuade audiences with words. He delivered some of the most memorable speeches in history, such as We Shall Fight on the Beaches and Their Finest Hour. Speaking was not only a duty for Churchill, but also a pleasure and a therapy. He said of all the talents bestowed upon men, none is so precious as the gift of oratory. He who enjoys it wields a power more durable than that of a great king. Churchill also relied on humor. Churchill had a great sense of humor and often used his wit and sarcasm to diffuse tense situations or to even mock his enemies. He was famous for his witty comebacks and quips such as when he said to Lady Astor, My dear, you are ugly, but tomorrow I shall be sober, and you will still be ugly. Humor was also a way for Churchill to cope with his depression and to cheer himself up. He said, I am easily satisfied with the very best. Churchill also relied on faith. Churchill was not a devout Christian, but he had a strong sense of faith and destiny that guided him through his life. He believed that he had a mission to fulfill, 
and that he was protected by a higher power. He said, I felt as if I were walking with destiny and that my past life had been but a preparation for this hour and for this trial. He also said, there is a purpose being worked out below the surface of events and I have a part in it. Churchill's battle with depression did not prevent him from achieving greatness and leaving a lasting legacy for the world. He was a visionary leader who foresaw the dangers of Nazi Germany and Soviet Russia, and who rallied the free nations to resist tyranny and oppression. He was a courageous warrior who fought in several wars and survived many near-death experiences. He was a brilliant statesman who shaped the post-war order and advocated for democracy and human rights. He was a gifted artist who created beautiful paintings and writings that enriched the culture and history of his country. Churchill's depression also gave him a depth of character and a compassion for others that made him more human and relatable. He said, if you're going through hell, keep going. He also said, success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. He showed us that depression is not a weakness, but a challenge that can be overcome with resilience creativity, and hope. Thank you all so much for watching this episode with The Anxious Resistance. If you enjoyed it, please like the video, subscribe to our channel for more, and thank you so much for watching.